Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, if you've been on my Instagram page recently, you will see some photographs um, that may have caught your attention. Um, this being one of them here. It's difficult to understand exactly what you call this, but uh, for, for argument's sake, we're going to call this um, how to stretch pixels in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you very quickly, um, or relatively quickly, how I created uh, this photograph. Let's get into it. So first thing we're going to get into Photoshop. So I just selected this photo. Uh, I don't want to say at random, but uh, all right. So anyways, we're going to jump into Lightroom. Excuse me. Um, before I get started with this photo, I will just real quickly go over this. So these the lines of the buildings are not uh, exactly even, so we kind of have a little bit of distortion just be because of the camera lens. So an easy way to fix that would be just uh, scroll down here on the right-hand side and just move your distortion slider a little bit to the right until we kind of correct the straight lines in the buildings. Now, there's other ways to do that as well, but this is just a real quick and easy way to do this. So, of course, we are going to have to crop this photo. And so for that, take your mouse, go to the corner, hold down the shift key so you keep the same um, aspect ratio. And we're gonna do the same on the other side, hold down the shift key. And just make sure those white parts aren't touching. And voila. Now your photo may not need this, you may not wanna do this to your photo and that's completely fine. So now it's kind of up to me here, where do I wanna move this photo? I just wanna make sure that I don't have those white areas in here. Probably cutting a little close, but I do want to have a little bit more of the sky just because I am going to be trying to stretch the sky kind of like in the previous photograph. So that looks good. I hit enter. All right, we're good to go. Um, now over here, I do have some of my favorite presets. I have I have probably 85 presets in, in total. Um, I'm going to use this as my base. Now I say this, I'm going to use this as my base. It's because um, I could ultimately leave this this preset uh, edit applied, or I may end up changing my mind and doing something completely different. But I, I kind of like this uh, coffee, no cream uh, preset. And as a matter of fact, if you want to head over to uh, to my website, if you go under blog here, click here, or you can check down here and you click on this, um, this blog, how to install presets in Lightroom. I'll actually give you that preset for free. So this is my coffee, no cream preset little personal plug for me, but anyways, let's get back to it. Here we go. So now that we've got this photo in uh, Lightroom, we're going to right click it. We're going to go to edit in and we're going to edit in Photoshop. Super fast MacBook Pro. Well, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad at all. So I'm just realizing now I am going to want to move this, uh, this recording. Otherwise, let's put you down here. Hope that's all right with everybody. Eh? All right, very good. So first thing we're gonna do on a Mac, we're gonna hit Control J. We're gonna, excuse me, we're gonna select here. We're gonna hit Control J. We're gonna duplicate this layer. That's so in case we mess up, we don't do any damage to this layer basically. And watch how easy this is guys. So here we go. So you're gonna go to filter, you're gonna go to blur, and you're gonna go to motion blur. And so I already have the motion set in here. So you can uh, change the distance of the pixels because I wasn't sure what to call this to, you know, so that you guys could, you know, uh, figure this out. I was, I was trying to do, uh, you know, motion blur, stretch building blur, matrix type style photos. And I wasn't really finding anything in Google. So I figured that's why I should make this video. Um, so for this uh, example, I'm going to take it all the way up just because I kind of like it extreme. Now, depending on which way you want to take this blur, you could simply move this compass type thingy around. But because I want mine to be up and down, I'm going to go to 90 degrees and I'm going to hit OK. All right, so there's that. So I, I think you kind of see where we're going with this. Um, but of course, that's not very interesting, is it? So let's create a new layer mask. And what we will do is go over here because the layer mask is white. We will go over here and change this to black. And we will take a brush, which I've already had selected. 
opacity is 90. That's what I recommend. Uh, I just realized my settings saved because I had done this before I made the video, but I'm going to keep my flow low around 17, maybe, maybe 15%. And the reason you do that is because, um, you can go over, you can go over it multiple times and kind of bring out what you want versus taking one swipe of your brush and then, all right. So then all we're going to do is we're going to start brushing in the parts of the photo that we want to see again. So just like this, let me zoom up a little bit. So I kind of want the vehicles here. I kind of want the, yeah, I want the street for sure. I kind of wish that car wasn't there. I could take that car out, but I guess it's all right. I'll save that for another video. I just changed my brush size. I don't use a whole lot of shortcuts, honestly, guys. Um, just want to make sure that I have all of this brushed away in here. All right, let's bring that brush size back down. So on my uh, on my MacBook Pro, I have um, a slider, which allows me to um, use like the touch bar, and I can select. But I'm using um, the program I'm using to record this isn't allowing me to use my touch bar at the same time. So I just want to kind of get in here and for me, I want to go, I'm going to go up the middle here and just kind of let's take away this blur. Let's see what this looks like. Just again, I'm making a lot of passes guys, right? I don't, I don't like making just one big pass. And we got a little on the truck here. All right. You basically get the idea. So you're going to mask this out, you know, how, however it is that you like. Um, now, for example, let's say I, you know, I painted this, I painted this building and I said, you know what, I, I ended up wanting to keep that blurry. All you're going to do is go back and you're basically just going to paint back over it with the white and that will fix our mistakes, right? Let me just make that light. So it kind of, kind of disappears. It's kind of some blurriness back there. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so that's basically it, guys. I think you got the idea. So what I'll do now is, since I changed my mind, I think I would like um, maybe some different color edits on this. If that's all you needed to see and you just wanted to see how you stretch pixels in Photoshop, then that's that's it. Um, if you found that helpful, please uh, please leave me a like and uh, a subscribe if, if you'd like to see more of these videos. Uh, also, but please leave me some comments if you know a different way to do this or a better way to do this. Um, but I'm going to keep going here, and I'm going to I'm going to add. Let's go to Photo Filter. I am kind of a fan of uh, blues. If you've been on my page, I, don't know, I just think it might be nice if I kind of make it cold. And let me just find a color I like here. I feel like I'm going to be in this area here. That might be kind of neat. Let's bring up the density a little bit. It's kind of like, oh yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like mystical, right? I don't know. It's neat. Futuristic. I mean, that's the idea, right? This is, this is supposed to be futuristic. This is supposed to be fun, you know, play with it and, uh, you know, just come up with some results that you like. So, so yeah, I like, I like that. It's pretty neat. Uh, but now we're going to make it moody, right? So um, I, I'm really not going to do too many more edits with this. I wouldn't suggest that you necessarily do this, but I'm going to merge my layers. Um, I just don't like clutter. I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to go to camera raw filter. Now camera raw filter, if you haven't used it, you'll notice that basically these sliders are very similar to what you find in Lightroom. So um, this isn't too, uh, this isn't too, different from Lightroom. So I am going to bring up clarity just a bit. How much do I want to go? 
I want this to be edgy, you know, like kind of mystical, but kind of edgy. Maybe some dehaze to take out some of that fogginess to it. Not too much. See, I'm getting a lot of like really crazy blue, you know, saturation up here uh, of the blues. I'm going to take that out. I, I, I like the blues, but I think it's maybe just a little bit too much. So I'm going to take care of that in a minute. I'm going to bring down my exposure just a little bit. Bump up that contrast, perhaps. A little bit there. And my saturation. Now, if I use this slider here, it's going to take saturation or add saturation from the whole photograph. I'm going to take that down just a little bit and just a little bit on the vibrance. So what I'm going to do just to take out these blues, I am going to go to, where is it? Where is it? I should say, uh, well, this HSL adjustments, but I thought that would highlight it. Anyways, we're going to go to luminance and we're going to go to the blues and we're going to just add some luminance to those blues and now it kind of makes it kind of disappear into the sky which is pretty pretty cool maybe try the aquas too i like that i think that's pretty neat i can change that hue too if i like make it more aqua make it more purple i'm kind of feeling a little bit more towards the aqua but not much i think i like it there so let me go back to the basic settings again Maybe play with my temperature just a little bit because I like things on the cool side. Again, I'm going to bring my exposure down just a little. Oh, how creepy we want to make it. Mm. That's kind of cool. Now we could put a gradient filter here and take that down. But I kind of like how the photo goes from dark and just goes into the light. So for me, this is awesome. So I think I'm going to quit here. And, uh, hell, I think I might post this next. What do you guys think? Hmm, not bad. Now, the cool thing is if you started with a photo in Lightroom and you transfer it over to uh, Photoshop, you don't even really need to save this because I, I do most of my edits in Lightroom. I prefer Lightroom. To me, it's a lot easier. I don't tend to use a whole lot of Photoshop tricks in my photographs. But I don't even need to save this. I can actually just go to Photoshop. I can quit. And I'll just hit Save. Uh, when Photoshop closes, you'll see that that photograph gets imported into Lightroom, and there it is. And I and 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 from here we can even, you know, we can even play with it some more. Um, of course, I'm not going to do that because it's kind of crazy. Uh, I like it like that. All right, guys. So then you're simply going to export that photo and you're good to go. So I hope that you, if you found this helpful, um, please give me a like and subscribe. I'd really love to hear your comments. Uh, if you have any uh, questions on how I uh, uh, did this or some of my other photographs. If you think you know a better way to do it, if, if I'm doing something wrong or you think there's a better shortcut, uh, leave me a like and subscribe in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And until next time, see you later.